see these different stages, you know, as just a learning process, a real learning event because you do, uh, as you uh, go through these um, different diseases, and I do have two, um, that uh, it, it, you, you just don't understand till you've walked a mile in those moccasins, you know, as they say. You don't know what it's like until you're walking there. And uh, it's all part of our learning experience. That's right. And if I've always liked to learn. I've always liked to uh, study and, and uh, you know, widen my view of things. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that as I pay glad life's arrears. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, I know that it may get tougher and tougher, um, but, you know, uh, that's part of the courage, and that's part of see all, not be afraid. Mm -hmm. See all. Just know it's there, yeah. You can see uh, what the end might be. Well, okay. You know, you got to go with some. You got to go some way, and uh, you just don't know how it's going to be. But um, as with you know your parents, you. Uh, but R Ruth is so tenderhearted. If I start talking about in in times, <laughs> and sometimes with business, you need to. She'll just tune up. She'll just start crying. I said, "Now, Ruth, stop that." <laughs> Stop it. You know, it's part, part of living. It's part of living. I said, save that. I don't want to see it. <laughs> save it for later on. <laughs> see if you can't hold it in or something. <laughs> but uh, try to be more realistic. Try to be more realistic and know that if I could talk about it and if I'm not um, distressed with it, you, you know, I don't want you to be. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't want you to be. And, uh, but anyway, this is precious. It's precious to touch base. And I'm so glad that even though I forget words here and there and some things, um, that I'm still as conscious, you know, as cognizant as I can of things. And to, uh, to know you and, and to recognize you and to remember, you know, to recall things together. It is so sweet, and I just, I'll, I'll just be thanking the Lord mm -hmm. all the day for this, uh, that that it uh, was such an occasion uh, for me. It, it's such a pleasure, and uh, and to you know I, I want to be that way to uh, to take advantage of of every moment and and and. You know, I love the uh, uh, hymn now, Count Your Many mm -hmm. Blessings, See What God mm -hmm. Can Do. You know, um, I, I just love that because if you count your blessings and if and giving thanks always for all things, that was one of the hardest scriptures for me. We lost our first little uh, baby girl. Uh, she was early, and uh, they didn't have the facilities then to uh, take care of things. So anyway... Um, and then I, I was reading my Bible and I read that scripture, mm. giving thanks always for all things. I remember throwing that Bible across the bed and I said, Lord, you expect me to follow Paul mm. in this. I don't think he ever lost a child. He never had a child. And, oh, I'm just, I was, and I think the Lord doesn't mind that. Mm -hmm. It's it's honest. Mm -hmm. It's honest, um, you know, and he understands. But anyway, that scripture just giving thanks always for all things. Am I reading this correctly? <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> and uh, but once I understood and uh, accepted that, but that was really hard scripture. Mm -hmm. That was, um, uh, um, well, there are hard scriptures. That's right. There are hard scriptures. Sure. And, and, and part of it, I, I'll just say, Lord, so much is a mystery because we cannot possibly understand 
the mind of God. Amen. We can't, except what you've revealed to us. We see we, through a glass darkly, don't we? Oh, we do. Yes, oh, see through the veil darkly. It is, and it, it'll be so wonderful when, you know, the, the scales fall off yes. and we're able to ask the Lord some things. And, um, and I, I, I had an aunt who said, Mac, my dad, Mac, you know, religion seems to be a whole lot. Don't do this, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Who wants to go to heaven? <laughs> you know? <laughs> she was, she had not been reared with very much um, revelation. But it was an honest question. Yep. You know, and in the Baptist church, there's a lot of thou shalt not. <laughs> and I used to say to my dad, I don't see in the scripture where it says thou shalt not dance. <laughs> and I said that to him one time. And my mother would, Naoma? <gasps> and my dad said, it's an honest question, uh, Ruth. Let her ask it. I don't know where there's a scripture that says that. <laughs> But then he got busy and he told me why he thought ballroom dancing, you know, at that time you right. didn't dance by yourself. And um, why why it was, uh, he said, men and women are, are they're, they're just different. They have different desires, they have different um, pleasures and so forth. And he said, I can tell you as a man, it really gives them ideas that they don't have any business mm -hmm. having when you're ballroom dancing. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's why the church is opposed to it. it because it leads uh, to unhappy situations where maybe you have a child out of wedlock or something like that. And um, it... You, you just need to avoid the pitfalls, the temptations. And, and that's why he was always so good to try to explain to me. Mm -hmm. But then the first date I ever had, we went, I was invited to Sunday movie. We did not go to the movie on Sunday. Oh. Well, I went about to turn that date down. <laughs> I've waited till I was 16, you know. <laughs> and so I knew it wasn't going to settle very well with them. But my dad um, was with mother, and she said, Oh, you are? Well, who is it? And I told her, and, oh, Well, um, oh, what are you going to do? And I said, Well, he's invited me to a movie on Sunday. I said, uh, We're going to the afternoon matinee. And she said, you know, it was a moment of silence. <laughs> now, Naomi, you know we don't go to movies on Sunday. And that's when I quipped up, you know, well, I don't see where it doesn't say you can't go to a movie on Sunday. And <laughs> my dad said, now, Ruth, she waited until she was, six, until she was 16. And now this is her first, you know, uh, decision. She's got to start making some decisions, and they might not please us exactly. But um, but she has accepted the date. I think she ought to keep it. Well, my mother didn't <coughs> argue with my dad a whole lot, at least not in front of me. And so I went to the movie. But hon, I just knew the Lord was going to come. <laughs> And I, I'd be left here. <laughs> I'd be left here. <laughs> and then I'll rise without me. <laughs> I really didn't enjoy that movie very much. But I didn't tell my daddy that. I just pretended it was a wonderful... <laughs> we just had a grand time. <laughs> I was so conscious stricken. <laughs> Oh, that's my wonderful. mother, my mother was, you know, she was more powerful than she knew. <laughs> <laughs> but she was, they were sweet. See, they, they wanted me.
to do what was right. And my dad would take the time to explain some things to me. And in fact, he taught me about the birds and the bees, mm -hmm. not wow. my mother. My mother didn't ex know exactly how to go about it. And she was embarrassed and my dad just, you know, very casually, put it, you know, not embarrassed or anything. He just straightforward, um, in a, but in a really good way, he explained things to me. And uh, and he would hear me out when I, well, I don't see, I don't see it, I don't see it's fair at all. Uh, when women have to go through, you know, childbirth and and I always had the cramps, really mm -hmm. bad, and uh, not I didn't take kindly to that either, and so <laughs> <laughs> my poor daddy, he, he had a lot of he explaining. listened to all of it. <laughs> oh, he did, he did, and uh, he would explain. But now, you know. If you just laid eggs and sat on them, <laughs> you you don't appreciate you what doesn't cost you anything. You don't value very much, Naomi, and you may have to pay a little bit of a price. You see, you may have to pay a price to be a woman. But think of men; they have to go to war. That's when women weren't so eager to go to war, and uh, they go to war, and they have um, they have to feed their families, they have the full, res mostly full responsibility for their families. You know, we we all have to work or pay some price for life. And um, oh, he just you know explain it to me and and say, and the more you pay for anything, the more you appreciate it. That's good. Yeah, I thought that's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's sweet. I, when we have good parents, don't we thank the Lord for them? Amen. We just, and you know, I, I have a, I have a, um, I th how much free will do we have? You know, that's a, that's a very tantalizing question. How much free will do we have? Because I believe that the Lord you know, answers prayer and intercedes and and like I said, I believe he is in charge of the the uh, the governments of this world and where it's going to lead as it's coming up to the end time and whatever do express his will. Well, how much free will do we have then? Or is it? Do we really want a lot? Or do we want to hand a lot of it over to him mm. and um, be free of that? Be um, he, and I do it. I think he expects us to use. He uses us. He uses us in his plans. We're his hands and feet, and mm. um, um, to minister in the ministry of the gospel, to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Well. We, we have a mission. Mm -hmm. We have a mission. and uh, But it's kind of, it's really intriguing how much just free will do we have or how much will, because we say we're trying to find the will of God in this. We're trying to ask him to reveal his will to us so we really understand. And I've been working with a young woman. She's been trying to find a job in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for two years. Mm. And she's 50, she said, they can't say it's my age, mm. but I know it is. Mm. Because they will tell me how qualified I am and, and everything, but then they'll hire somebody else. Mm. And they hire somebody else. And we have been praying with her I have been praying with her that my Sunday school class has been praying with her for two years. And the only thing she can figure now, and she's gone for I don't know how many interviews, and she's had temporary jobs mm -hmm. along, but they won't hire full time. Mm. It's if somebody's out sick or if um, 
oh, one crazy woman <laughs> she worked for. Finally, I, I think, just didn't know what to do with uh, Ruthie, Ruthie Chavez. And she, she had a plane, and she didn't fly it, but she had a pilot. And she just flew out. Mm -hmm. She just told her, well, I'm going to Oklahoma, and left. <laughs> Um, you know, so anyway, anyway, I, we've been trying to find his will. Well, her mother now is ill, and she's from Lima, Peru. Mm. And she said, you know, since the Lord has not opened one door for me, not really a door, I'm thinking now it must be that he wants me to go home and be with my mother. Mm. She is very capable, and some of her brothers and sisters aren't, and her dad was a doctor, mm. and he had a second family on the sly, mm. and they finally found out about it. Goodness. Oh, it just, oh, it just killed her. Mm. And then the brother wanted to make up and bond the two 